Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We do give God praise. Amen. 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 We bless the Lord for another opportunity to come together. I'm so glad to assemble myself with those of like precious faith. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I like what the Apostle Paul said. I thank God I have an inheritance amongst those who are sanctified. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. We do give God praise. I have, I don't know about you guys, but I have been enjoying this journey through Galatians. We've been, we've been in the book of Galatians for over a year. You don't know that? Kind of crazy. Hallelujah. Never did ask me. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've been here for a while. But you know, that, that's my teaching method. That's the way the Lord did. I, I, love to, I love to get into the cracks and the crevices of things. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going, to, we're going to the book of Ephesians, right straight, right on to Ephesians when we finish this, this book, hallelujah. But we're at the tail end of Galatians chapter 5, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. We won't, we won't try to go back and rehash all of that tonight. Amen. If you need some review, I encourage you to go to YouTube, because everything that we have done to date can be found on YouTube. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so grateful. Thank God for the tools of YouTube. And hallelujah. And I encourage every one of you to enroll in YouTube University. <laughs> you know, that's a good tutorial. Some good tutorials on YouTube. You ever you ever want to know how to change out a light socket or whatever, you can go on YouTube and they'll give you step by step. You know, some that's somebody got a video for it. Hallelujah. People say that there's an app for that, but there's a video for that now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Or you can Google it. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Father, let's pause. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word tonight, Lord, that's already blessed. Father, we thank you tonight that this word, once we give it, the, once, it once we receive with meekness, the engrafted word, the scripture says it's able to save our soul. And that word save is the Greek word sozo, which means to make whole. It's able to make our soul whole, which includes our mind our wills, and our emotions. God, I thank you tonight for emotional healing because there's some people in this room who need to be touched in their emotions. God, I can feel that in my spirit. Lord, I thank you for strength right now. Hallelujah. Tonight we confess that you are our strength. Hallelujah. Strength like no other. Hallelujah. Tonight God's strength is reaching unto you right now for your emotions. Hallelujah. For your mentality. Hallelujah. God, I speak soundness of mind to you. Glory to God. I speak, to, I speak the sharpness of your perception, of your perspective now. May your perspective shift now. May you begin to see your circumstances through the eyes of faith. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. We thank you. There's no distance in prayer. Hallelujah. Psalms, glory to God. 101, hallelujah, 105. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, you sent your word and healed them. Lord, right now we speak the word over, over Lena. Father, we send the word to Jacksonville, Florida right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, just like you stood outside, you stood down the road from a centurion servant's house. He said, Lord, you don't need to come to the house. Just speak the word. Hallelujah. I'm going to take your word for it. Glory to God. Father, tonight we take your word for it. And we speak your word over me, the Lord. And while you're touching her body, Lord, touch her mind. In the name of you, because that's the most important thing. God, touch her mind. And Lord, and just change whatever needs to be changed, rearrange whatever needs to be rearranged. Let this time, let this, Lord, let it be a time of reflection. God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, we know that before healing can become permanent, there has to be change of habits. So, Lord, we thank you right now, hallelujah, you're God all by yourself. We thank you tonight, Lord, for this time of study. We thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is the navigator in this room tonight. He is the orchestrator. Hallelujah, Lord, and for the next hour, I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Make me an oracle of God. Hallelujah. Give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see. Yes. Do it for us tonight, Lord, and we're going to give you all the praise. Yes. It's in Jesus' name, Lord, touch my queen as she's home trying to rest. She has to work tonight, Lord. I thank you for that moment. God, touch her right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for doing it. Hallelujah. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. Glory to God. Let me just read through and then we're going to move on. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is. It knows he didn't say are. He said is. The fruit of the Spirit. He didn't say fruits. He said fruit, right? 
Hallelujah. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Against such there doesn't need to be a law. There don't need to be a law against right living. The Bible says the law is not even for the righteous. The reason why God gave the law is because sin was in the land. Right. Hallelujah. So God did something that the law couldn't do. Right. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, and hallelujah, that what the law could not do because it was weakened by the flesh. Wasn't that wrong with the law? There was something wrong with the flesh. Right. Hallelujah. The law became weak by the flesh. Hallelujah. And what the law could not do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did it. God did what the law couldn't do. Hallelujah. How did he do it? He sent his son. And his son came in the likeness. Somebody say likeness. Hallelujah. His, I mean, how many of y'all know Jesus' flesh wasn't sinful? But he came in the likeness. He looked like us, but he wasn't us. Hallelujah. But he became us. I want y'all to catch that now. He became everything we were. The Bible says, and I love to quote this, one of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible. I call it the great exchange. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says God took him, meaning Christ, yes. who knew no sin, and he became sin. Yes. Notice, he didn't become a sinner. Mm -hmm. He became sin. That means he became the sin bearer. Yes. He bore our sins. Yes. He didn't bear his own, but he didn't have any. Yes. He took upon himself our sin. So that tells, I want you to remember this now, he didn't die for you, he died as you. Hallelujah. I used to say in this I said, Jesus died. Hallelujah. Now I don't have to. That's not true. No. He died because I had to. Yes. Hallelujah. He, that tells me he died my death, Robert. He didn't die for me. He died as me. Yes. When he was on the cross, God reckoned. Somebody say, I reckon. He reckoned that was me up there. Whenever you exhibit faith in the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, you identify with his death. Yes. Say, identify. Hallelujah. That means you become one. You, you put yourself by faith. You reckon yourself in Christ. Hallelujah. The scripture teaches us in Romans 6. We, you know, we, we spent a whole lot of time over there. The Bible says, reckon yourself indeed dead to sin, but alive unto God. Hallelujah. A lot of people know we need to turn from sin, but they have a problem because you don't, you don't just turn from something. You also have to turn to something. Yeah. Let's say that another way. You don't just turn from something. You turn to somebody. And that term is called repentance. Yes. Hallelujah. Repent means more than saying I'm sorry. A lot of folks say I'm sorry, but they haven't repented. Yes. You ain't repented till you change. Right. You got to turn. Yes. I say you got to turn. Got to and it's not a 360. Right. It's a 180. Right. <laughs> you, you do understand the difference, right? Yes. You do a 360, you still face the same direction. Right. Hallelujah. But when you do a 180, military calls it an about face. Hallelujah. Against such there is no law. There is no law. There doesn't need to be a law. Hallelujah. But now let the reader understand. Let, let, us, let us understand this again, family, that the fruit is of the Holy Spirit. We can't produce this. And that's hard for people to see because a lot of times people want to kind of read into the Bible. Well, I think that's good in everybody. I don't. And that's something hard for people to come to. Because before we can really become a candidate of grace, we got to see our own depravity. Right. We got to see our own that, that without him, we are absolutely nothing. Right. Without him, we can do absolutely nothing. Yes. Songwriter said, without him, I would be nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be drifting like a what? Yes. What good is a ship without a sail? It's not going to go anywhere. Yes. The lady of George Burch used to say, if you don't know where you're going, in the road will take you there. <laughs> he said, the problem is, you wouldn't know when you arrived. <laughs> the late Dr. Miles Monroe said, if you don't know which harbor to seek, any wind is the right wind. You got some folks just following any kind of wind. They just want to follow what's popular. Yes. Hallelujah. As a child of God, you must not concern yourself with popularity. That's right. As a child of God, you must not concern yourself with popular opinion. That's right. Because many times your walk with Christ is going to take you against the grain. Can you stand to be right by yourself? Yes. All right. yes. Can you stand to be a Lord? Yes. Can you stand to be a leader? Yes. All right. 
Sometimes, hallelujah, you must understand that if you're going to walk with Christ, if we're going to walk with him effectively, we cannot just be blind followers. I don't care how many people do it. Wrong is still wrong. I don't care how many people do it. Right is right. I don't care if ain't nobody doing it. We must never judge right and wrong based on the number of your participants there are. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, hallelujah. There's no law. But again, the fruit is of the Holy Spirit, not of man. It, this fruit is only developed as we are led by the Spirit. Then he produces his fruit in us. Yes. Hallelujah. That fruit is evidence, John 15. John 15, Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Anybody ever seen a grapevine? Yes. Did you, know, did you notice you don't ever see grapes growing on the main trunk? The grapes always grow on the branches. Hallelujah. Right. And if there's something flowing into those grapes that if, if they didn't receive that flow, the grapes wouldn't grow. Right. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it did. I said, if, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the, hallelujah, if the thing didn't flow, the grapes wouldn't grow. That's good right. stuff. Right. Hallelujah. That, 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 that stuff is on the inside of the trunk. It's called sap. Say sap. sap. Or sometimes they call it resin. It's, it's, it's sap. Hallelujah. That sap, hallelujah, is almost like the bloodline of the vine. That's right. And, and, and it flows through the vine and it gives nourishment. Hallelujah. And you can tell that those branches are getting nourishment because they're producing grapes. Right. 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 Yeah. He said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. In other words, we are the fruit bearing part of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, and there are going to be times and there are going to be seasons in our lives because, I mean, you know, God has got increase on his mind. Yeah. That means that there are going to be times and there's only one way to make a branch produce more fruit. Pruning. You have to prune it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, say pruning. pruning. It's a painful process. Painful. Oh, Lord, have mercy. When the Lord start cutting, he start cutting stuff. He start cutting stuff away. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the purpose of pruning is to remove dead ends. Yeah. Ladies go to the you go to the barber, you know, you go to the beauty shop, say the barber shop. You go to the beauty shop, yeah. hallelujah, and you have your, sometimes your hair have split ends. Yeah, yeah. I just split all the way, hallelujah. Yeah. You? <laughs> <laughs> you have split ends, hallelujah. And if you have you, you can tell when you got split ends because your hair just start looking frizzy. Mm, yeah. You can't you can, it's unmanageable, you can't do nothing with it, hallelujah. Yeah. And sometimes the hallelujah, sometimes a seasoned hairdresser mm -hmm. have to almost scalp your head. Hold on, girl. Don't you say you just clipping off the ends? I have you taking too much of my hair off. What you doing? <laughs> and she said, "Don't worry, I got you. Yep. I got to take these split. I got to take these split ends off." Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Thank God. God knows how to get the split in the dead ends out, 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 out of our life. Because there's a lot of stuff we're trying to hang on to. Come on, that's good. Hallelujah. Come on, Facebook. Y'all on the list tonight. There's stuff we all are trying to hold on to. And God is trying to snatch some stuff away from us. We got to get rid of some stuff. That process, what? A lot's got to go. <laughs> That's that process of sanctification. You understand salvation is in all three tenses. Hallelujah. I think my friend Dr. Claude James talked about that the other night. I wasn't able to join him. Hallelujah. You talked about the three, the three tenses of salvation. Hallelujah. We were saved. We are being saved. Yes. And we will be saved. Yes. Salvation covers all three things. Yes. Past, present, and future. We were saved from the penalty of sin. Yes. We are being saved from the power of sin. Yes. And one day we're going to be saved from the presence of sin. Yes. The penalty, the power, the yes. presence. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Past, present, future. Glory yes. to God. Salvation in all tenses. Yes. Salvation is both an event and a process. Yes. Yes. It is something that happens spontaneously, but it's also something that happens Process in yes, process. Yes, yes, yes. The process of salvation is called sanctification. Come on, come on. Uh, we're being sanctified. Yes, yes. I said we're being sanctified. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. All right, yes. let's move on. Glory to God. We may, we may finish chapter 5 tonight. Let's see. Let's see how close we can get. Hallelujah. Y'all still you're, you're not to chapter 6 yet? We I sent them to you probably about three months ago. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I got to get this thing recorded with my glasses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't got no space behind my ears for both of these apparatuses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hallelujah. And look at verse 24. You there? Yes. 
Verse 24 says, and they who are Christ. How many of you belong to Christ? Yes. All right, this is talking, so come on, say this verse. This verse. It's talking about me. They that are Christ have done what? Crucified. Have. Say have crucified. Have crucified. Not, 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 not going to. Have crucified. Oh, look at him. Those, we must distinguish those who are Christ's from those who are not. A child of God belongs to Christ. Believers belong to Christ. We must understand, I'm going to mess with you a little bit now. We must understand that there is a difference between folks who come to church and folks who are believers. I think I saw Sister say she posted something similar to that. Hallelujah. Somebody said, and it's kind of comical, but it makes the point. It says, coming to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in the garage make you a Cadillac. That's funny, but to me it makes the point. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't get this by osmosis. That's right. I just be in proximity. No, you just take more proximity. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a personal thing between you and God. Hallelujah. God is not going to impose. Watch it. As powerful he is, as he is. Hallelujah. I said as powerful as God is, yes. there's something that God can't do. Right. Shh. Wait a minute. I won't pass Wait a minute. Because I was told God is all powerful. He is. He is. I was told that, you know, that, that God, that he's sovereign. He is. Go on, Pastor Tony. He just said there's something God can't do. That's right. As a matter of fact, there are three things God can't do. You, you, you want to hear me? Yeah. <laughs> the first thing God cannot do is, number one, he can't lie. Are you listening to me? If God say green is red, guess what's going to happen? Green, about to turn green. God cannot lie. Number two, God can't learn. Watch this. This is one. Though. Number three, God can't make you love him. Can't make you do it. Because forced love is not love. If you got to force it, then it ain't real. If you got to force it because you got power, well, I got the upper hands, I'm going to make you do. That's, not, that's manipulation. God would become a witch if he did that. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you agree yes. with everything I just yes. said? Yes. He can't lie. He can't learn. He can't make you love. Right. Hallelujah. All right, so love is something that is produced by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but when the Holy Spirit produces that in us, the scripture tells us that the only reason we can even love God is because he first So all we can do really is reciprocate back to him what he's done to us. Yes. Hallelujah. And you know, the, you know what the ultimate fulfillment of love is? When it's given back the way you put it out. Love is a powerful thing when it comes back, when it's reciprocated. Hallelujah. And this is what this is why love is the greatest commandment. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. They, 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 they who are Christ, and they who are Christ's, that, that, that apostrophe that shows possession there. David, they get those who belong to Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. As I said, honey, believers belong to Christ. Not everyone is a believer. Right. Hallelujah. How I many of us want to be a believer and just say, I believe? Right. Right. Hallelujah. The way you, hallelujah, watch this. What, what, what shows what a person believes? Right. Their actions, right. what time they live. Because your action, your everyday action, I'm not talking about the time that we fail like we all do sometimes. I'm talking about the habitual action of a person, that overall bit, hallelujah. That's what determines the direction of your belief because, faith, because belief is not just a persuasion. Belief is a conviction that leads to an act. You show, James said, show me your faith without your works or without corresponding action. He says, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Hallelujah. Come on, say so the acid test, the acid test of, faith of faith is obedience. obedience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how we show we, 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 we love God. This is how we show we believe in him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We belong to Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love this. 
2 Timothy 2 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his. Aren't you glad he knows you who you are? Yes. Aren't you glad he knows where you are? Yes. Come on, he knows. We don't have to try to tell God. Uh, again, he can't learn. Amen. Even when we pray, when we pray and tell God, let's have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. You think that's the first time he needs your trouble? No. <laughs> so do, let me ask you a question. Do you pray to inform God? No. Then why pray? The Bible says he knows what you need before you ask. Yeah. But Lord, if you know what I need before I ask, then why pray? Because he told us to. But there's something deeper going on. It tells you that if you can if you, if you see, if you can do this by the Holy Ghost, he says, I know what you need before you ask, but I still need you to ask. Hallelujah. It tells you that God doesn't respond just because you got a need. God responds to faith. Yeah. When James, when, 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 not James, Mark, Mark's gospel, Mark 11, 22, when he says, have faith in God. You know what the Greek says? The Greek says, have the faith of God. How does God kind of faith work? How does God kind of faith work? How did God create things? He spoke. And did you know that God finished? That there, there were two. There were two Greek words employed in creation. There are also two Hebrew words employed in creation. One is called bara. The Hebrew uh, uh, Genesis one one. Better she's bara Elohim. <laughs> Something like that. Hallelujah. I might have put enough phlegm in that last word. Hallelujah. But it simply means in the beginning, God created. Hallelujah. Better she bara. Bara means to make from nothing. But then God takes the stuff that he already created and fashions it into something else. That's the Hebrew word asa. So what the word the Hebrew word bara means to make from nothing. And then the Hebrew word asa means to take raw material and transform it into what you want it to be. God, he used both. He used both both words in creation. All right. The Greek the Greek uses the word the word logos and rhema. Hallelujah. So when God creates, he does he uses both forms. Logos means to think, to think the wrong principle, to decide, to to ponder, to to reflect. All this speaks of the word of God. Hallelujah. But then when he opens his mouth, logos becomes rhema. It becomes a tailored text. It's almost like there's a difference between buying a suit off the rack and going at the tailor make you one. You want a suit that's, that, that specifically fits you, you got to go to the tailor and him take your unique measures. Somebody else may put it on, but it ain't going to fit them like it fits you because it was made for you. Now, I was accused, well, I was accused earlier, amen, of, of, of whipping somebody here last Sunday. I ain't with nobody. Hallelujah. Don't go real long since it's all good. I got to look for the thing. I said, you whip somebody? No. Hallelujah. But sometimes the word comes so so sharp. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't know. All I know is sometimes God will give you a rainbow for a situation. Yeah, that's right. It's called a tailored text. Yeah. Something that's been cut to fit. And a lot of times, Sister says, you're going to, you're going to really, if you, you're coming into the edge of this because you begin to see some kickback. What happens is whenever you start, whenever you start operating in Rama, folks start getting mad because what Rama does, Rama has a tendency to point folk out. That's right. Watch this without calling their name. That's right. <laughs> I ain't calling nobody the name. But when you somebody said a hit dog, we'll holler. <laughs> And say, well, that's the hearing that cackle. That's the one they did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, uh, but, 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 but the reality of it is we need both. We need the logos and the rainbow. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank God I got, we got 66 books we can read from, but there's a time when I need something to speak to my yes. unique situation yes. right now. We'll deal yes. with it. I need a rainbow from the logos. Yes. Yes. And sometimes I need an assault from the barak. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stay with me. It's going to get good here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. They who belong to Christ have crucified. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Again, this is not talking about your heroic effort of trying to produce righteousness. This is not talking about us adding our, humanist, our human strength to what God has done. 
This is talk. This is our. This is not. Watch this. I'm going to tell you. I want you to hear this. Please catch this. Because crucifixion here is not talking about self crucifixion. We're talking about positional crucifixion. That in Christ, say in Christ. in Christ. That is one of the most powerful prepositional phrases in all of the Bible. In Christ. You'll find that phrase in the New Testament alone. In Christ, or in whom, or by whom, or through whom. That in Christ, or derivative of that phrase, you'll find it in the New Testament alone over 150 times. Can I suggest to you that when God repeats himself that many times, he might be trying to say something. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> say in Christ. Yeah, right. See, that makes a difference. Now that you're in Christ, you are crucified. Yes. You're not trying to be positionally. And see, you've got, watch this, you've got to understand your position before you start working on your condition. Because right. yeah. yeah. the problem is many of us are trying to address things that we haven't yet properly assessed. Right. Assessment got to be made first. And then once we fully assess, then we can more effectively address. Yes. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? Are you listening to me? Yes. All right, hallelujah. So we are, hallelujah, Galatians 5, 24. We, are, we have crucified the flesh, hallelujah, out of position, hallelujah. Because positionally, listen to me, look at me, ladies. If you're in Christ, positionally, you don't want to sin. That's right. That's right. If you're in Christ, you don't want to do wrong. That's right. That means when I mess up, I didn't want to. That's right. And this is why when you mess up, you feel bad till you get it right. That's not bad. That's a good thing. You're supposed to feel bad when you mess up. My problem is I'm afraid of people who can do wrong and don't feel nothing. People look in your face and just lie and know it bothers. I'm, I'm concerned for folks like that. Especially they say they know Christ. <laughs> people that they get to just wave off the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I, I know the Bible say that, but oh, <laughs> that that concerns me, Mother Barbara. When people, when people, and I'm gonna watch this because really you can give me yourself. I know what the Bible say, but <laughs> I mean, you know, that's not that's not the statement you use, but behind. No, <laughs> hallelujah, glory to God, because Peter tells us that it's best not to know the way right. yes. and to know it and fall from it. You'd be better off if you were ignorant. Some of y'all are trying to stay in it, but you ain't going to sit in this church to be. Uh -huh. <laughs> I ain't going to let you. I'm going to send you stuff every day in your inbox. I'm going to text you stuff. Hallelujah. After a while, I'm going to fly a paper airplane to your house. I'm going to find one. I'm going to get a homing pigeon or something. Or an airplane. Uh, 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 one of those, what you call those things? A drone. I'm going to do something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a way. Hallelujah. What do I have to do, amen, to get this thing off of me and get it on you? All right. All right. All right. I'm freeing myself when I yes. preach to you. Yes. 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 That's it. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Free yourself, Sister Satan. That's what you're doing. You're freeing you because God burdens you. Yes. He put things in your spirit, and you have to say what he said, even, even at the risk of making somebody upset. I don't say things just to make people upset, but I got enough sense to know that some people are going to get upset right. because the truth has a way of upsetting them sometimes. Yeah. Let's be honest and say sometimes we'd rather not hear it, mm -hmm. especially when it goes contrary to what our predetermined direction is. Right. A lot of people, when they ask you, ask you for your opinion, they really don't want your opinion. Yeah, they, want they want your that. affirmation. <laughs> they want you to confirm a direction that they already want to travel. Yeah. And at time you say something different, I was wrong with him. Mm -hmm. All right, hallelujah. The flesh has affections and lusts, amen, that must be submitted to the cross of Christ. Right. Hallelujah. This is why Jesus had to die. Right. He didn't just have to shed blood. He had to die. Mm -hmm. Watch this. His blood took care of what I did. Yeah, right. But his death took care of what I was. You understand? The blood, the blood, shed blood, one drop of his blood, again, it's the difference, and I got to work, I got to work this path, I ain't going to try to do it all tonight, but there's a difference between forgiveness and redemption. Forgiveness, hallelujah, 
gives you a release from what you did, but you're still who you are. If I had time, and I'm going to take a little time, a minute or two, take it back to the book of the prophet Hosea. God, amen, was dealing with Hosea, but before Hosea could carry God's message, he had to first have God's heart. He had, Hosea had to understand how it feels to love somebody who ain't faithful. Oh, Jesus. God called this man to minister to Israel, and Israel was committing adultery with other gods. And God said, Hosea, now I'm, I'm going to give you a rough assignment. He said, I want you to go to a woman named Gomer. You ever, you ever read the book of Hosea? Yes. There was a woman named Gomer. And God told the prophet. Yes, he did. He had to, first of all, give me some poetic liberty too here. He had to go to the red light district to find her. <laughs> Excuse me. He had to go to the hood. Because he said, because Gomer, Gomer, Gomer hung out in low places. Yeah. yeah. I want you to hear me about the Holy Ghost called spiritual. That's where we all were before Christ came. We were all in a low place. We all were Gomer. You understand, you understand this. The narrative is in, in the story of Hosea and Gomer, we were Gomer. Hosea was God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I found the Lord. That ain't true. You ain't find me. He found you. We didn't even know where to look. I'm so glad he found me. I couldn't get where he was, so he came where I was. Yes. That's what redemption is all about. Hallelujah. Hosea, before you can carry my message, I got to first get you to feel what I'm feeling. My, my, my. So go marry a woman and she ain't going to be faithful. Nope. She's going to cheat on you. Yep. And she ain't going to just cheat on you. She's going to have children from other men. Yep. You're going to have to, you're going to have, hallelujah, you're going to have to raise children that you didn't follow. She did, that's right, more than once. Now, don't criticize Gomer too bad, because I can tell you spiritually, we were Gomer. Most of the time, and it's, and it's sad, but most of the time, even now, some folks don't even think about God until they get in trouble. They don't even think about God until I need to get my bills paid. Hallelujah. We call it the prayer team and everybody, didn't we? Right. Y'all pray, God. Ooh, I don't know what to do. Oh, no. But, 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 but when you got plenty, all of a sudden, I don't get nobody here for you. Right. I can talk to anybody here like that. Right? So, so he married Gomer, and she did exactly what God said she was going to do. And Sister Sarah, you, you know the story. Hallelujah. He, 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 the miracle was not that he married her. That was the miracle. The miracle was that he loved her. You don't love nobody like that. Says who? He did. In the midst of all her cheating, he still loved her. In the midst of all her philandering, he loved her. She was a loose woman. I don't mean loose in the sense of free. <laughs> but Hosea loved her. What am I going to do with Cole? He loved her so much that he lost sleep. He loved her so much that he brought children in that she had from other men and put his name on them and raised them as his. Y'all not hearing this yet. That's the gospel in the Old Testament. Because it doesn't seem fair that, 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 that I would ask God to help me make help me straighten up a mess that I made. Yeah. But God loves me so much that he tells me, come on, bring me mess with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. Come on, bring me mess. Yeah. This is what we got this week. Somehow or another, Lord, help us in this church. We got to get that mind that when people come, they don't come with a mess. Yeah. And we got to bring, we got to open our arms. And we got to love on folks and love hell right out of them. Hallelujah. We got to love them right out of their mess. I'm in the midst of their mess. Don't you know I'm aware of all the homosexuality and lesbianism going on? I'm not blind. I know what's happening. I know people running around doing stuff they ain't no business doing. But, 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 but I can't dwell on that and stay true to the text. Right. Right. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, but so called. I've been shot of the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He loved that woman. And even when she made a mess, 
and ended up right back in the slave market. Had a, she had a, got her got in so much trouble that she had to start selling herself out. Hosea went down to the went down to the place of the barber and saw her on the tip, saw her on the on the platform being auctioned off to the highest bidder like she was a cow. Hosea said, I come, I, I, she, that's the one I want. Right? That's my wife, and I still love her. You know, God said he's married to the backslide. That's what he said. Hosea. I forget the exact terminology, but, but, but the price that he paid. But I got a sneaking suspicion that the price he paid was equivalent of that day for the price of redemption, which in, which in Christ's day was 30 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> silver is the metal of redemption. Mm -hmm. He bought her, and she thought he was buying her to enslave her. He had to tell, she come on, she she was, she was so accustomed of being used and abused. Because right, right. some people are so accustomed of being used and abused that they don't even know how to be loved. Yeah, right. Don't even know what it is. Yeah. Don't even know how to receive love. And Hosea had to tell her, woman, I didn't buy you to enslave you. I bought you to free you. Come on home with me. Yeah. And let me teach you how to behave like a free woman. Ooh, that's good stuff right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to take on the Hosea one night. Hallelujah. That just, that just gave me a whole book in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we are we are in Christ. We have crucified the flesh. That's our positional crucifixion. With, so, that, Sister Gilman, this is so so effective and it's so true that in relativity, when God looks at us, he don't even see us. He sees his son. He sees Christ. That's what the Bible says. It's Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. He sees Christ. Yes. It ain't even about you. Say amen if you're all right now. Thank you, Lord. It's a positional crucifixion. This is something that God does, not us. God did. Yes. This is something that God did. Yes. It's a unilateral covenant. It's the covenant that was prefigured, foreshadowed when God swore to Abraham. Yes. The Bible says because he couldn't find no greater, who did he swear to? God said, I swear to me. I swear by myself, I'm going to bless you. God said, surely, blessing, I'm going to bless you. Amen. Multiply, I'm going to multiply. Amen. So much so that in you, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. You and your seed. And some people thought he was talking about natural Israel. No. Ain't got nothing to do with that. Just, ain't got nothing to do with the folks in the Middle East. Because if people could expand and think and let God touch them, hallelujah, this covenant, this promise is, is, is for everybody. It is, it's for all people, even though you call Palestinians, which is simply an update word of Philistines. Same word. It's the, say Palestine is Philistine. Same. They were Philistines in the Old Testament. They're Palestinians today. But the reality of it is, Jesus Christ is not a nationalistic salvation we're talking about. I don't care where you're from. That'll get you thrown out of some churches. Yeah, okay. yeah, That'll right. get you thrown out. That'll get you thrown completely out of many of these evangelical churches. Because they're trying to say that God loves a certain segment of people. I'm trying to tell you. I'm telling you, man, we got, we got to see this thing. Hallelujah. So you don't fall for the hype. Right now, they're trying to raise red heifers. They're trying to get money to build a third temple. And the Bible don't tell you where the temple of the Lord is. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, 14, what? Uh, no, you're not. Oh, you are. You are. Come on, that's what he said. He said, what? Don't you know by now that you are the temple of God? Oh, no. Why are these people trying to, they're trying to, they, 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 got, they got another agenda. They're really the synagogue of Satan. But that's too strong to say. Uh, <laughs> they are. They're the synagogue of Satan. That's too strong to say publicly, so I won't say it. <laughs> I think it already slipped out of Hallelujah. I don't recant because it's true anyway. <clears throat> hallelujah. But now, inside, in the, see you, in order to see this impact of this, you got to kind of bring Romans 7 back into this because there's another law in our members. There's an internal war going on. And everybody. Whether you want to admit it or not, all of us have an internal struggle. Right, right. 
And remember I told you at one time that the struggle is, is proof of progress. Yeah, remember I told right. you that? Yeah. Pastor, come from struggling. I'm like, thank God. I'm glad you're struggling. Now, I need to get your throat out of some place. I told this man, I'm struggling. He clapping his hands. That's a good thing, but there was a time you didn't struggle. There used to be a time when you just gave in. Right. Right. Come on. But struggle is proof. Watch this. Get a hold of this. Struggle is proof that I haven't given up. Oh, you got to change your perspective about things. Yeah. All right, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. All right, flesh is a force. The flesh is, watch this. When the Bible speaks about flesh, he's not talking about skin, bone, sinews. He's talking about force. Yeah. A force that is at work in all of us. A principle, a, a principle that try, that, 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 that that's working against the will of God. It's, a, it's an antagonism. We, we got an antagonist yeah. living inside of us. Right. I don't care how saved you are. You talk to tongues every day, but there's still a, there's still a little Lucifer in you. Yeah. Right. Oh. Right. There's a little Adam in there. Yeah. Right. Pretty damn nature is still present, and every now and then it still tries to snare us. I don't care. You, you, you don't have to agree with me, but I know I'm right. right. We still got Adam staying. Right. Hallelujah. So this is why this is why daily we have to reckon yeah. ourselves. They need to be dead. Because positionally we are. Yeah. Now my condition have not yet come to the reality of my position. Positionally, I'm working is being done every day. And here's the good part about it. God is the one who's doing it. Right. By the Spirit, the Spirit of God. Because it's getting easier. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff only you want to do. That's right. 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 There was a time in my early, earlier walk, there was a time, there was a time when I just had to just kind of suppress things. Yes. But but the Lord helped, the Lord had to help me to understand that son, suppressing sin is not freedom. All right. All right. All right. He says, if you stay, if you stay yielded to me, and, and please understand, yielding is a daily thing. As we learn, as we learn to walk in submission to God, God will do something about your want to. Yeah. Even your want to will begin to shift. Yeah. And after a while, the day will come and you don't even want it no more. Yeah. Well, what? That, that's against God. That, that's that, uh, that, that, those things that are not in harmony with the will of God. You'll get to the place after a while where you don't even want it. Lord, I'm going to thank you that you did something about my want to. Yeah. Because as long as the want to is present, I'm still struggling. I woke up one day and I didn't want to get high no more. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to struggle against marijuana now. Yeah. I don't have to struggle against alcohol anymore. Yeah. I can walk all around it. Don't even bother me now. Right. Right. There was a time I had to, kind of, had to be careful. Right. Don't be careful. You know, every now and then. And taste yeah. get back in your mouth. Yeah. Hallelujah. But thank God the taste buds have shifted. Right. Right. I'm talking about conditional uh, crucifixion. Positionally, it's already done. Yes. Positionally, you are perfect in Christ. Yes. I'm trying to move out of that, but I, I, just, I just want to make sure you know, make sure you, make sure you get it. Hallelujah. I love this. Hallelujah. Flesh is a force that makes us violate the Holy God. Jesus crucified the flesh. Hallelujah. It's a definite and decisive action. Hallelujah. If I want to get grammatical, which I will take you to the Greek and, and let you understand that, 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 that while... That while we in, in English, I would, we have three tenses in English, past, present, future, and you only can also incorporate the perfect tense, present, perfect, past, perfect, different, you know. But but then the Greek has uh, has other has other tenses. One of the tenses is called aorist, an aorist tense, which has to do with definitive and decisive action. I wish I had time to dissect this. I, I just oh, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's Again, this is not saying that this is something. We must do. He didn't look, notice what the verse I'm trying to get out of 24. Notice the verse did not say those who are in Christ should crucify the flesh. It says those who are in Christ have, have crucified. That's kind of a past perfect. Past perfect meaning an action that, watch this, an action that took place in the past, but it still has present ramifications. That I have done this. Which means it was completed sometime back there. In our case, it was done 2,000 years ago. 
I mean, God made the provision before you even got here. Yeah. Oh, have mercy to you. That, that still blows my mind. That, that the Bible tells, matter of fact, let's go back further than that. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna discover when we get to uh, Ephesians that the Bible says he was crucified from the foundation. The Lamb of God was crucified from the foundation. That means before he even created this earth. It's kind of hard to get your mind around it. That God did this, that God, watch this, that God, watch this, that God um, created a solution before the problem even showed up. Which tells me, this is what it tells me, this is what I get out of that. I get this from that, that sometimes God allows a problem so he can reveal his solution. <laughs> the solution was already made. But before, watch this, but before we can see the solution, we have to encounter a problem. And not just any problem, but we have to encounter a specific problem. Before God can show you the specifics of his solution, amen, he has to allow us to get into stuff that, that we don't have a point of reference for. Watch this, because I, I, I want you to put a pin in this. Everything that God is taking you through, everything God has brought you through, even to this present moment, all of those things are qualifying you for ministry. What it does is it gives you a sense of empathy because I'm going to tell you, right, people who are overly critical of other folks and always criticizing other folks, I guarantee you that them folks ain't been through nothing. Because when you, watch this, whenever you've gone through things, you become less critical. That's right. Amen. And you develop a deep sense of appreciation for somebody's struggle. Now you don't beat folks over the head. Are y'all listening to me? Does that make sense? Yeah? All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, even though Christ crucified, he, was, he died 2,000 years ago. Watch this. The reality of the crucifixion, because see, this is what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit takes the person and work of Jesus Christ and makes it real to us. So here's what I want you to see from this. That the reality of the crucifixion took place in us when we put our faith in Christ. That's when the reality of it took place. It was done whether we realized it or not. But the day that, whatever that moment was, for me it was 41 years ago, when I exhibited faith and when my eyes came open to the reality of what Christ did, hallelujah, I grabbed them because this is what faith does. Faith reaches out and grabs hold of the unrealities of the unrealized things that hope produced. Hallelujah. In other words, hope gives faith, a, 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 it gives it a job because faith is the substance of things Hope for. So hope is always present tense, but faith grabs the unreality of hope and brings it over to the reality of my now. I wish I had time to deal with all that too. Woo, this is so good to me. So faith makes it real to me now. Faith says, I don't have to wait till I see it. Faith gives you the ability to get excited about stuff that you don't see. Are you still in here? Faith, hallelujah. By faith we understand. That the world was framed by the word of God. I wouldn't dare when he did it. Yeah. But by faith, I understand he did it. And he didn't do it with bullets and bricks. He did it with words. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because in the mind of God, words are building products. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Say words. Words. Are. are spiritual. Spiritual. Lumber. Lumber. Yes. You know why sometimes we have what we have? Because we're saying what we're saying. We have to change our words. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus said the issue of our sins when we believe him. We recognize it's, it's an ongoing fact. Hallelujah. We make, the, we make victory actual in our experience. Jesus Christ made the position of truth of the crucified flesh actual on the cross. We make it real to ourselves by faith. It was 2,000 years ago when I was there. You're going to you sound crazy to folks. Go, what do you mean you were there? You remember Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am? I am. Yeah. Who are you supposed to be? You ain't even 40 years old yet. You talking about before Abraham was. You crazy. Huh. And they're going to call you crazy. Huh. When you start talking about stuff that happened 2,000 years ago, just, as if it just happened last week. You done lost your mind. Yeah, you, you, you read your Bible too much. You lost your senses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to tell them that phrase that your pastor always used. Hallelujah. I may be out of your mind, but I'm not out of my mind. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just out of your mind. Yeah. 
Let's go to verse 25. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going to build another verse here. We might get it. see. If we live in the Spirit, and we do, this word if would have been better translated since. Since we live in the Spirit, let us also walk. I love this. But guess what's sake of argument? Let's go with the if. And look at the word if. Now, this is in your notes. This is in your Galatians notes. Look at the word if. And look at the word let. Look at the words let us. If. Let us. If. Let us. If. Establishes. The principle, let us, establishes the application. If this is true, and it is, that's the principle. If we live in the Spirit, because there ain't no other way to live if you're in Christ. That doesn't mean you float around having a spooky. Ooh, I'm in Christ Jesus. No, no, that ain't what that's talking about. You start talking about being in the Spirit, people get all kinds of crazy stuff. It's not, it, it, you're talking about Halloween and spooky stuff. Ooh, no. <laughs> He's talking about you being connected to Christ by the Holy Spirit. You're in Christ. That's by the Spirit. There's no natural way to observe it. Don't, watch this. The only, watch this. The only way it can be observed is an application. Because the body of Christ, who will all take you? The body of Christ is mystical. What do I mean when I say mystical? Come on, I'll think. Spiritual. Don't let the word scare you. Mystical simply means you can't just lock it up in one place. Mystical means there's not one group that got a corner on the market of this truth. That God has people everywhere. <laughs> and, I'm, and I promise you, listen to this, most of the people that God has, and I think I released something to you today about how God, how the Lord called Matthew. Matthew was, was probably one of the most least likely people who would have been called to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That would be like me taking somebody who worked for the IRS and making them an elder of this church. Because we, we, we tend to not like IRS people. Which I do. I mean, you know, I'm just, you know, just saying. Something about the IRS, the, the way I feel about it, the less dealers I have with them, the better I feel. Right, right. This is the honest. When we talk about that fellow that did my work for, Artaxerxes, I told you if you have trouble pronouncing his name, slow it down. Our tax hurts us. Our tax hurts us. Artaxerxes. That's my mind. Oh, hallelujah. Now, listen now. So now, Jesus called that Levi. Matthew. Follow me. Well, that's his tax table. Yeah. Yeah. And there was, all, there was always a little suspicion about Matthew. Right. Always, if you go study the history of it, there was always a little suspicion about it. Mm -hmm. I wonder, have he really, I, I wonder, I wonder, have he really left his tax collection? Right. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he going he probably still in allegiance with Caesar. Mm -hmm. He ain't really following Christ. He ain't really following the Lord. He probably a Roman spy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised at people who try to size you up. That's right. I wonder what, what she really doing. She ain't here for Bible study. She got another agenda. Uh. <laughs> but Matthew really was. Jesus, Jesus looked beyond all that stuff and he saw a potential in Matthew. Yeah. It's like he sees the potential in you. Right. He don't call religious folks. I all take them out. Everyone he called, but none of them believed. Right. Peter was a fisherman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James and John, hallelujah, had so much fire in his soul, they were called sons of thunder. Yes. Zebedee's boys. The sons of Zebedee, they were sons of thunder. They, they were scrapping them in. Right. You want to fight? We get started too late. <laughs> <laughs> Judah, well, we ain't even talking about Judas. Hallelujah. But well, these are the kind of folk that Jesus chose. Why in the world would he choose these kind of folks? I got an answer for you. You want to hear it? Because he chooses broken people yes. to minister to broken people. That's right. Mm -hmm. That way you know it's all grace. I got five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let me see. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Okay, if we live. Okay. The, 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 the Paul's argument. I love the way that the way the way I got instructed in these notes. The argument if 
and let us. If relates to the principle, and the let us refers to the application. God is always, God always appeals to living this life based on our standing in Christ and in the spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something, family. Hallelujah. You got a standing in Christ Jesus. You got status. You are people of status. Did you know that? The devil don't want you to know, and, and, and I'm working on a message here, hallelujah, about not being ignorant of Satan's devices. Because the enemy, doesn't, he don't want your eyes to come open to your real reality, to your real identity. He wants to keep you blind to who you really are. This is, we, we talked about secret societies and different things. This is why people get into stuff, because they're trying to find an identity. Right. They're, trying to, they're trying to find a sense of importance. They're trying to find something that adds a measure of prestige to their lives. Are y'all listening? People get involved in games because I want to belong. Yeah. They, they get involved in all this is this is how even in the church, and I'm glad ain't none in here. But this is the reason why in churches you get clicks. Right. You get a church click. Right. Which is the worst kind of click. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we, we can't let it form in here. No. We got to fight against a click because that destroys the livelihood of a church. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. The word walk. Let's move on. I want I want to, I want to try to get through with this. Let us walk. If we live in the Spirit, and we do, since we live in the Spirit, let us also walk. Walk refers to our lifestyle, right? right. This passage declares both life, watch this, he's talking about both life and holiness, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. Now, the sooner, the sooner we realize that, the better off we're going to be, because because I grew up in church, but holiness teaching was a little different. I grew up in a church where holiness was based on what you had on, how you wore your hair. Young lady, you couldn't wear makeup. You couldn't wear pants, because if you had on pants, you wear something, you, you wear a garment that pertains to a man. Are you trying to look so masculine? You, uh, come on, y'all, 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 it's, it's young people, thank God y'all were spared. I'm telling you, I'm so glad. Hallelujah. Because it took the Lord a long time to untwist that stuff out of my head. But Steve, I was so scared that I was trying to get saved every Friday. Because every Friday was terror service. And I, and I was certain that I lost salvation between Sundays. So every, every Friday, we back on the altar, I get saved all over again. Because I know I ain't got it no more. Because you know, I mess around and put on an old shirt today. And that's fine, you know, and, and let too much skin be shown. Right. You know, you know, you hold the old hole in this church. You got the button that top button. You can't have no skin showing. Right. Man, you a man, button that shirt. Nobody want to see the hair on your chest. Right. Uh oh. It was all kind of woman. You showing too much skin, so your dress had to sweep the floor. Right. Hallelujah! And you show God been not wear no sun dress. Your arm pit top. And I always used to say it was kind of joking, but I meant what I said. Brother, if an armpit turned you on, you need to be delivered. <laughs> you can't stand looking at a woman's armpit. Something wrong with you. But then I call them clothesline preachers. Because in their mind, it was holiness. And all the women had the same hairdo. Especially the old Church of God women. The hair looked like a beehive. They had to put it up in a bun. They had to tie it up. You can't let the hell lose. You can't let it hang down. Oh no! You got to tie it. You got to grab that stuff and whip it up there. Hallelujah! Head look like some cool whip. You got to bring it up there. Look like an ice cream cone from Dairy Queen. You got you know look. Oh, there she go. That sister two stoop right there. She is. Oh, you're facetious. But I'm trying to make this was called y'all. It was called holiness. Now I have no doubt that these people they were sincere. But guess what? They were sincerely wrong. A lot of people are sincere. Newsflash, newsflash. Sincerity doesn't make you right. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Slow down, clock. Hallelujah. Let us also walk. Hallelujah. This Greek word walk, it means to walk, in, it means to conduct oneself. It means to hold to. It means to stay in line. It means to. There's a standard, hallelujah. There's a, there's a, there's a method. There's a, there, there's a prescribed method. There's a, that's the word, protocol. All right. That I'm going to walk according to my convictions. That's right. 
that it's not just going to be something I talk about. Right. It's something I'm going to walk about. That's right. That's right. We're going to walk this thing out. Yeah. Every day we're going to walk it out. Yeah. And hallelujah. Because you are becoming a living epistle. Somebody's going to look at your life and they're going to see Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's right. Let's walk in the spirit. Yeah. Let's walk in the spirit. Y'all, let's walk in obedience to the word. Amen. Yeah. Forget about trying to, try, try, trying to keep rules. and let, let the Holy Spirit produce this fruit in us. So, so that so that the life of Christ, because again, the fruit of the Spirit is simply the character of Christ. Yes. Did you say amen? amen? And then finally 26, here we go. We're going to finish chapter 5. Oh, 26, I might get stuck here. And let us not wait. Don't become conceited, provoking one another. This word conceited, I love this. There's another translation that says, let us not be desirous of vain glory. Yeah. Can I just tell you that some folks are just too full of themselves? Yeah. Paul laying out a challenge to the Galatians, and it's the same challenge being laid out, laid out to the black sharings. Right. You won't find it in the website. I just, I just, I just, that's a Millerism. Miller's Dictionary, Expository Dictionary, New Testament words. Hallelujah. Black Sherians. That's the folk that live in Black Sherry. Who is for us? Ray Crossers, too. We just right across the bridge. He, he, he hits us, too. He's telling us not to be selfish, not to be conceited. Hallelujah. Not allow tension to develop because of spiritual pride. A lot of folks are just they stinking pride in the way. Most of the time, you put a pen in this. Most of the time, what causes most of the contention and the tension in the church is pride going on somewhere. Yeah. Somebody don't want to humble down. That's right. <laughs> the Bible says, where you find envy and strife, where you find pride, you find every other evil work. So we can't be conceited. Let us not do it. We, why? Because we're walking in the spirit. Say walking in the spirit requires me to not get conceited. Hallelujah. Don't get don't, don't, don't get in. Let us not become conceited. Hallelujah. Let us not become. Let us not. He begins with the negative exhortation to not allow ourselves. Amen. The word conceited means to glory without cause. Some people are legends in their own mind. And they, 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 somehow they erroneously think that this church won't even function without me. Man, you crazy. Hallelujah. Y'all know y'all can't be without me. Man, you crazy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You go to your job. You better find to quit. They have your position filled for the weekend. Hallelujah. Amen. They may not be able to take your place, but I promise you somebody will take your space. Hallelujah. Don't go to glory without God. It's an empty, to be conceited, it's an empty glory. Because we because none of us, not one of us can justify our glory. So, so it's empty, it's vain. Vain glory, that's what it is. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. And some folks just want people to tell them how great they are. Who's supposed to be praised in this house? Him and him alone. The Bible says he that glorious, let him glory in the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. And I'm closing. Hallelujah. This is this is a falsely proud person. We can't glory in nothing we did. Hallelujah. Conceit, hallelujah, turns the tables. A conceited person operates at the polar opposite of God's plan for creation. We're here for his glory, not ours. Yes, right, right. It's all about him. Say amen. Oh, hallelujah. Pride and ambition always seek to be more important, more richer, more wiser than anyone else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If your aim is your aim as a believer to be more valuable than other believers around you, if that's the case, then you got the wrong goal, baby. Bless God. I'm the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm just glad to be in the kitchen. <laughs> Somebody said, if you always the sharpest knife in the drawer, then you're in the wrong drawer. Hallelujah. And finally, that last phrase is gone. Provoking one another. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Provoking one another. Provoking one another. Provoking one another. All right. Because what, 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 was, what was provocation? Come on, say, don't, don't be, be 
the source of irritation. That's what it means. We got to quit irritating each other. Oh, Lord, here you come. Anybody watch that movie, Johnson Family Vacation? Yeah. Every time old boy come on, King Folk! Oh, here he come. I see y'all. Why, why are they all running? Because every time he come, let me hold some. It's, it's going to stir up some. And some folks, you, 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 you hate to see him come, but you're glad to see him come. Yeah, right. Lord, have mercy. He's telling us that we can't go. Don't, don't be desirous. Don't be conceited. And provoke one another because once pride come in, you will become a church irritant. Like smoke to the eyes. Irritant. We cause and, and it, it just irritate. It just conceit always. It always disrupts the cause of Christ. We can't let it be named among us. And this is why when we see it try to raise its ugly head, we got to cry against it. Amen. Especially when it's operating through somebody in a leadership position. That's when the enemy focuses attack. I told y'all last Sunday that New Beginning Fellowship Church is a frontline church. Remember I told you that? So they're going to be brunts. They're going to be brunts that we're going to take. They're going to be hits. They're going to be hits that you're going to take. Hallelujah. And we must not become irritable or irritants to one another. Hallelujah. We always got to let the, let the grease, let the lubricant of God's grace, hallelujah. That's what the anointing is. The Bible said the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing speaks of the fatness, of the, the expansion of, it speaks of something that's around the neck that makes the yoke less irritable. Hallelujah. It's almost like, it's almost like rubbing some ointment on a chaff area, an area of your body that's chafed. Hallelujah. Amen. You put some ointment there, all of a sudden, it, 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 it lessens the friction. And what we ought to want to do is that we ought to want to have as least amount of friction among yes. us as possible. Yes. Right, right. Even naturally speaking, most of the sickness and disease happening in the world is caused by one thing, inflammation. When the body becomes inflamed, say inflamed. Inflammation, tension, provocation is a disease to the body of Christ. And some folks end up with a, a catalyst for sickness, spirits of sickness. Everywhere they go, they stir up friction. Amen. So he don't, 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 don't let that be a monk. Why? Because we're walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. And envying one another. See, obviously you're going back to the works of the flesh. If you don't, if you don't stay in the spirit, you're going to all, there, there is no middle ground. I said there is no middle ground. Right. If we don't stay in the spirit, we're going to gravitate back to the flesh. Always. Yeah. Oh, there, there, there is no demilitarized zone. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are no gray areas. Yeah. Are you listening to me? You one another. Right, right. Hallelujah. So we must not let these things, uh, uh, the, the person who envies and, and begrudges one another. Hallelujah. The person who bears ill will. Now, I ain't talking about it. Well, what you doing then? <laughs> I don't mean no harm. Well, hush your mouth. <laughs> well, it's only gossip if it ain't true. You lying? <laughs> Even if it's true, if it doesn't, if it doesn't edify, it's gossip. Right. And please, y'all, please, here's, here's, here's your motto for the rest of the year. Make sure gossip dies when it reaches your ear. Because the Bible says where there is no wood, the fire goes out. <laughs> Where there's no wood, the fire goes out. Hallelujah. Next time, we're going to begin with chapter 6. Amen. Amen. Chapter 6 only got 18 verses, so we got, we got a chance to get through for the end of the year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. Y'all enjoy this? Is it anything I'm not helping anybody? Is it uh, getting anything out of this? I tell you what, if I ain't helping you, I'm helping me. Hallelujah. I'm glad I came. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we give God praise. Hallelujah. Every head is bowed. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Father, we pause now and say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Better put, since we live in the spirit, we're in Christ Jesus. And Lord, what a privilege, what a, 
What a privileged position that we have, each one of us. You're in Christ. You have a position of honor. You're in Christ. Lord, thank you. I pray for every person in this room, Lord God, that you would touch in a way that only you can. You see the situation, Lord, and I'm asking you, God, that by your spirit, you will strengthen and every person receive the strength of the Lord. Be edified tonight, family. Hallelujah. Let God have his way in your life. Don't be a, don't, don't be a church irritant. <laughs> don't, be irri don't be an irritator. Don't be an agitator. Because you know, an agitator is that thing in your washing machine. And the agitator always stirs up dirt. Hallelujah. Beats dirt out. Hallelujah. We're not agitators. But sometimes speaking truth does agitate. But our purpose is for agitating, if you will, in that sense, is not, not in the negative connotation, but I, I, in the sense that I'm using the word is that we, we may have to shake some dirt out because we're trying to get the dirt out of the laundry. Lord, I want to thank you. I pray, God, that you breathe on us now that every person in this room become a peacemaker to know how to walk in a place bring peace even if it means you have to be quiet Lord I thank you now there's a special grace being dispatched from the throne room of grace right now there's a special grace being dispatched Lord we thank you now hallelujah the rest of our lives are going to be revolutionized Lord we thank you we thank you God we give you praise hallelujah touch our face with all this Lord strengthen them oh God hallelujah Lord, we got people that, that follows us faithfully. And I pray for each and every one of them, Lord God, that you will touch them and their families. Hallelujah, right there in their homes or wherever they're watching tonight, Lord God. Thank you for doing it. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We just stand with you now. Glory. sweet communion of his Holy Spirit in the love of Christ Jesus. May it rest, rule, and abide with you, his people. May God grant you traveling grace and mercy as you drive back to your homes. May God be your trip back home, be without incident, and be without accident. Let a special garrison of angels on your warring, your ministering spirits set forth the minister to those who are the recipients, who are the beneficiaries of salvation. Let those angels be encamped around your people now, Lord. Hallelujah. Right now. Holy warriors are filling this room right now. Thank you, God. With swords drawn. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, right now. Thank you for taking care of us, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and continue to give you his peace. I speak peace to your soul. Speak peace to your mind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. With your right hand extended with me, say these words from Psalms 19, verse 14. I love it. Lord, Lord let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. In Jesus' name.